So this is a very exciting release. We haven't had a Jigsaw from Hasbro, I don't think, ever. Correct me if I'm wrong. I don't know if they did it in their early days, but uh, the last time I recall seeing a Jigsaw was Toy Biz Marvel Legends. So it is nice to finally see him in, you know, in an updated form. He does come with several accessories, which is nice to see. So I'm glad that we're getting some accessories, even though some of them or most of them are reused. At least we are getting some accessories, especially since it is Jigsaw. That's much needed. So there's the front of the package. Here is the side image, which is pretty nice. I really love the art there. And in the back side, this shows him once again. It's just a single release as an exclusive, so there is no wave. But there is a read-up that reads, Jigsaw is a criminal with a heart as twisted and gruesome as his once beautiful face. So here is Jigsaw out of the package. Looks like he is on the suited body. It looks like it's the upper torso from the Hellfire Club and maybe the lower torso or the legs I should say of either just the regular suited body or also the Hellfire Club. But nothing here is new. We have pinned knees and pinned elbows. Uh, but overall it's uh, pretty clean. We have some paint with the handkerchief there. We got some paint here on the buttons and the uh, buttons over here as well. Of course the head scope will get into that. Uh, and then you can see the black under undershirt slash tie. So there is Jigsaw. One thing that I unfortunately realized upon taking him out, I always, when I take out a figure out of the package, I always move all the joints and the right leg thigh swivel is completely like, I think it's glued because it's it does not want to budge. I try to twist it as hard as I could and I almost popped the entire leg off the ball joint here in the groin. So this thigh swivel does not want to swivel. My my left one does, no problem. But this one literally is molded, stuck there forever because I swear it's gonna break if I if I go any further. So unfortunately, um yeah, I have to deal with that. I mean I might hit it with some hot water, but I don't know if that's gonna do anything. Anyways, let's go ahead and proceed. So first up, he comes with a silver bat, which is cool. It's painted silver. It's got some black here for the handle. I appreciate it. So um, I guess this is supposed to be a metal bat because no wooden bat is silver. So we have a metal bat here. And then we also will get a big, massive machete. So this is cool. We got some paint detail on the blade and on the handle itself with some buttons there or some, you know, bolts. So I appreciate the paint details always, so that looks great. And then proceeding on, we have a knife. Not only do we have a knife, but we have two knives, same same mold. Silver paint for the blade, black for the handle, no complaints there. And then we get a sawed off shotgun, which we've seen all these accessories before, but these are just different painted accessories. The top here, I don't know what's going on there, but of course I get a QC issue on my on my figure because it's mine. I you know I have to have something. It's just never perfect. But here is the handle, black, underbarrel is black, and then it's silver, uh, metallic-ish molded plastic for the actual barrel. And then what's cool is that they included in the the effects that they they've released before, but we don't get them as often as I as I wish. So these are for of course the shotgun. The only gun he has so you can put it it's a double barrel so you should be able to put two it's a little tight squeeze so there you go or if you don't want these then we get the almighty smoke effects which I love so this will give off the scene that he just got done firing the actual weapon and if I can get it in I can show you guys there you go so we got a little smoking effect coming from the shoddy. So very cool. I appreciate all the accessories that he comes with. Um, especially coming off the reviews of the Bone Breaker build a figure wave, and those figures were lacking in accessories. It's a it's a nice refreshing um, you know, feeling to, to have a figure that comes with quite a bit of accessories. Alright, so I'm sure the majority of us have seen the fantastic head sculpt, but if you haven't, here is the phenomenal, tremendous head sculpt on Jigsaw. Literally one of the best head sculpts I've seen in quite a while. They really went in on this. You can tell this is 
their digital printing on a comic base figure. Um, if I super, super zoom in, and I don't know if I'm able to catch it, but let's bring him closer. Um, you can see the detail more, but you can also see a little bit of graininess, a little bit of pixelation on the teeth there, and that is due to the digital printing. Um, if you pretty much look at any Star Wars SH figures, figures, you'll see a lot of that because they do use the digital printing, and it's even more pixelated on those figures, or grainy, I should say. Here's not too bad, honestly. It's just when you get super, super up close. But other than that, really... I mean, it's not a big deal. I love the scars. I love the stitches, the uh, the bandages or the butterfly stitches or whatever he has going on. It's got it all over, and it's all painted. It's all detailed. It looks fantastic, even in the hair, even the back of the head here. Look at that gash. Pretty gnarly. This is a fantastic head sculpt. It looks great. Really, it it, it really does. So now going down to the torso, you can see this little neck piece around his neck. That is removable if I pop the head off. You can take that off and have him without it if you want. And he looks like that. And then this would be removable, but uh, you would have to, I think literally you would have to rip it open or break it or cut it. And then it wouldn't make sense because his undershirt is, is black, but then the sleeves are, are molded on there. So... It'd be white sleeves from the jacket with a regular, you know, polo shirt, black underneath. It just wouldn't make sense. Um, so, I'm not going to bother doing any of that stuff here. But here's a closer look at the suit and the legs. Nothing, uh, you know, not much to look at, but there's a close look anyways. All right, so as for his articulation, his head sits on a ball jointed hinge, as you see right here. Uh, it's going to get hindered when you have the collar on. But, of course, if you take it off, you have a little bit more range. So, he looks up, up until the back of the head hits the uh, back of the jacket. But still, it's still a good angle looking up. Looking down, pretty deep because of the hinge. Left and right, no problem. A little bit of head, uh, sorry, a little bit of head tilting there, which is pretty cool. And now, if we put the collar back on, then let's see how limited he gets. So looking down is going to be impossible now. Looking up, it's still pretty decent. Left and right, no problem. And then head tilting is a little bit more limited now. So overall, it's much more limited with the collar on. Now the arms are going to go forward all the way around. In and out, no issues there. Bicep swivel, double jointed elbows. Swivel at the wrist with a side hinge, so that's great because that's where he holds the weapon. Now he actually has a side hinge on both the wrists, even though this is just a knife grabbing hand. Uh, he would have a ab crunch, but it's of course covered by his jacket that is not removable, so um, you're not really going to utilize that at all. You do have a waist swivel at the waist, of course, and then legs will kick forward and back. They go in and out. Now, the thighs would swivel, but only one of my legs swivels, as, as I mentioned earlier. So, the left leg on mine will swivel, but the right leg is pretty much cemented in place and does not want to move. Then we get a double-jointed knee. And then for the ankle, we have an ankle hinge, a rocker at the foot. And then we also do get an ankle swivel, which is kind of uncommon nowadays. Alright, and real quick, before we get into the height comparisons, I just want to show him holding his actual weapon. So there he is with the shoddy in his right hand, which is the only hand he can hold it with. And then the left hand should be utilized for his, everything else pretty much, his baseball bat, his knives, and his machete. So here's the bat in the left hand. No problems there. And since it does have the side hinge, I should expect it to kind of, you can pose it with, it with it on the shoulder type deal like this. And yes, he can. So that's great. Really like that. And then, of course, you can replace that with it's some. Let's see the machete here, something a little bit more uh, aggressive, I guess. And there you go. Get the machete going there. So very nice. I love it. And then, of course, if you want something a little bit more smaller, let's do it backwards here. We have, uh, well, it's a pretty big knife if you ask me, but <laughs> we have a knife there. Nothing to holster the knife with at all, but uh, it's fine. I, he doesn't 
I don't think he, uh, <laughs> unless he hides it in his jacket, I don't think he hides all this stuff. But, uh, very cool. I, I really love the accessories. I dig it. And, of course, we gotta get the Punisher next to Jigsaw. So, this Punisher actually, very interesting enough, this is, I think this is the figure that debuted pretty much every accessory that you see here with Jigsaw. We got the sawed-off shotgun. We got the baseball bat. We got the machete on his back. And I'm pretty sure he came with other accessories as well. Uh, probably the knife and probably the, the, the smoke effects and all that, but... Um, overall, this is a nice, uh, this is a nice Punisher. This is the one that came with the motorcycle, I believe. He's got pinless elbows, so that's, uh, very nice. But they do look nice. They're, they're kind of in a similar pose here, just with different weapons in different spots. But I love it. They look great. And you can see how Punisher does stand quite taller than Jigsaw here. Also, they're both bandaged up, kind of battle damage in the face. Although Jigsaw looks way better than than the uh, Punisher, since Punisher does not have any of that digital printing. All right, up next, I want to put what I want to say is the retro vintage wave Punisher. Correct me if I'm wrong, but uh, this is the one with the big old bazooka, as you see him here, and he does stand taller once again than Jigsaw. And then here we have the Walgreens exclusive Punisher, which is. Pretty much very similar to the uh, vintage retro card. Actually, this one came before that one. And this one comes with several other accessories like this big old machine gun. We got the shotgun here, and the automatic shotgun, and then a big old bazooka in the back. So this one's different. Um, I know there's more, plenty more Punishers out there. There's still the Epic Heroes version, the Toy Biz versions as well. There was also a fan channel exclusive Punisher. But I still truly feel like we haven't gotten that definitive classic version of Punisher yet like that you know like that Captain America 20th anniversary type of cap like that's a lot of people's definitive caps right now we need one of those for Punisher I think and here's a look at him next to Daredevil he does stand slightly shorter than Jigsaw and then here is Bullseye which stands almost around the same height but I think he's slightly shorter here he is next to another suited villain and it is Kingpin you can see the whites are very different from each other's suits. Um, the white on Kingpin is a much more white than than the white on Jigsaw's suit. More of a creamy type brownish color for the white on Jigsaw. But you see he's out of frame. He's way taller and bigger than Jigsaw. All right, since he is part of the Bring on the Bad Guy Super Villains wave of figures, we have Baron Zemo, which was the previous Walgreens exclusive next to Jigsaw. As you can see, I love the pose where you can put a weapon on the shoulder. So I have Baron Zemo exactly the same way right here. All right, and it's random, I know, but I just wanted to get a few figures from the Bone Breaker wave since I still have it here from recently reviewing the whole wave. So if you missed out on that, be sure to check out my review on the entire Bone Breaker build a figure wave. But here is Siren. And here's one more from that wave. I won't overdo it, but here is Sabretooth. A lot of mixed reactions on this figure from that wave, I noticed. Uh, he's a little hunched over, but he does stand taller than Jigsaw. And another random comparison, but I just wanted to get him next to another female figure and another kind of white suited, white coat figure. You can see the whites, just so you guys can get an idea of the color white on Jigsaw's suit. Alright, and that'll do it for this review on the Walgreens exclusive Super Villains line Marvel Legends Jigsaw figure. Very, very nice. I actually like this figure um, a lot. And I feel like it's my favorite recently reviewed figure so far. That's counting the entire Bone Breaker wave. This one really looks good. And it's uh, a lot to do with that head sculpt. That is where the money is for sure. And I hope to see a lot more head sculpts that look like this. This is fantastic fantastic so hopefully you guys enjoyed this review let me know your thoughts down below what do you guys think about this jigsaw our very first jigsaw in a very long time does it live up to the hype um does it live up to the weight that we have had to endure to get a updated jigsaw you guys let me know down in the comment section and while you're down there hit that like button i would really appreciate it and consider subscribing if you haven't done so already as always everyone take care take it easy and i'll catch you on the next one bye